Hey boys, welcome back to another NRL Supercoach video in the lead up to the to the season starting. I was, uh, you know, just just excited for the for the season in general and also Supercoach. So I wanted I wanted to do some videos on it. Um, I'd already shown like a a very brief first team, although the video was like 30 minutes, but I went through like a very initial team. The team is obviously going to change a lot. Um, but in in uh, in this video and preceding videos, I actually wanted to go through like every position and sort of just give a bit of a rating and uh, and a thoughts into into what players I think uh, are going to be good, are going to be poor. Um, you know, just, just discuss like uh, the depth of the positions and uh, and stuff like that. And uh, we're going to be starting off with one of the toughest positions to fill this year, or not to fill, but um, a tough decision to make, and that's the dummy halves. I, I honestly think the dummy halves and the fullbacks are the are the trickiest spots, um, and I, I don't, I honestly don't know who I'm going to, who I'm going to stick with um, come round one, but uh, yeah, let's get into it, because I guess the thing is, is that there's a couple of cheapies that almost are must-haves, and then there's also a couple of almost lock-ins as well, so it's tricky. But we'll start off with the absolute number one here. I've just got to sort it with um with price points at the at the minute. So Damian Cook, obviously, he's a, he's a standout dummy half um, for the last couple of years now. He's he's topped it, and it's it's tough. I mean, he's obviously you've got. Let, let's let's think about it like this: you've got your, your top three here: Cook, Smith, and McInnes. Now, out of Cook and Smith, I mean, again, Smith. I, I think Smith is still a very very good option this year. He is though. I remember last year, I I got Smith at the start of the year over over Cook because Cook was extremely expensive. I can't remember exactly. He would have been about the same price. Um, as this year, but Cameron Smith was way cheaper. He was about like, he was way lower than Cook. He he must have been a, again I can't remember the the exact, but it must have been 200k cheaper than Cook. So that's that's the main reason why I thought Smith was basically um, easy money over Cook at the start of the year last uh, last year. This time, however, they're both very very similar price. Um, so it, it's it, it's tricky though because there, there's benefits and negatives of both. The negative for Cook is that he's going to be playing Origin, and it's it is a it is a big factor to consider. You know, obviously teams have buys regardless, but a player like Cook going through the Origin period, he's going to be playing 80 minutes. He's going to be making mass tackles. He he went he, last year. He had a pretty. He didn't really have a a drop-off from memory, like, he, he sort of backed up and played big minutes regardless, he had a couple of games, or maybe one game in particular, where he, he, he was, he struggled after an origin match, but I think for the most part, he, he backed up pretty well, but, you know, that, that's sort of like six weeks, um, you know, backing up, and then also before origin, like, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough time for for Cook definitely. Like he, his points will be down. He might not get the game time. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Bennett does again this year if he does give him a couple of rests. So there's that to consider. And then Smith obviously not gonna be playing Origin, so he'll only have the buys to contend with. And then Smith is just you know he's got the goal kicking. He makes the tackles. He doesn't have the upside of a of a cook. He's not going to be making a couple of line breaks, getting a try every couple of weeks. Um, but fairly, fairly like for like. And I'm at the moment. I don't think I'm going to go with either of these two. It's it's going to be a tough call. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Cook. I think I might gamble and not go Cook or Smith. <laughs> That's just early predictions. Like I said, there's still a couple of months, and I'm sure it'll change. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be tough. But then the number three here, Cameron McInnes. Now, there's a there's a big factor here. McInnes is actually taking over the captaincy for the Dragons, and he had a stellar year last year. He was honestly just he, he was about on par with Cook and Smith in terms of averages. He might have been 
as good. He averaged very, very well. He he missed a couple of uh, a couple of games late with concussion, I think. Um, but McInnes was outstanding. So anyone that um, went McInnes over Cookle Smith last year probably, you know, had, had just pretty much as good a year. Honestly, they they wouldn't have lost too much. Now McInnes taking the captaincy, I don't think it's necessarily going to change too much. Um, but he. I, I, it, it probably will motivate him a little bit more to want to win. You know, players want to win regardless. But taking the captaincy, I'm sure he'll he'll work that little bit harder. Even though he's already uh, he's already an, a workhorse. So McInnes, but the the one kicker here is that as you can see, McInnes is actually a dual position. Now I have no idea why Cameron McInnes is a hooker slash second row forward. I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't know why they've given him dual positions. Now I don't I don't mind it. Um but I just don't really understand it because a lot of other players that even played like two positions last year didn't get dual positions, but for some reason McKinnis, who was out and out dummy half, got dual position. <laughs> I don't I don't know. But the the kicker there is that I'm probably gonna be going Cameron McKinnis in my back row because Again, I think McInnes is going to have an outstanding year. Uh, he's not going to play Origin unless you know unless Cook gets injured. He he might get a call up, but McInnes he's going to be Origin unaffected. I don't think personally. I don't think the Dragons are going to have a fantastic year again. But McInnes always stands up. He always scores well, so he's probably going to slot into the back row because I feel like there's better options in the dummy half spot than McInnes. So being able to s slot him into the back row, I think is a, a pretty good, a pretty good pickup, a pretty good pickup. Um, so yeah, I mean, he is expensive, 633, and there, there are definitely some, some good back rowers, but I think McInnes is just a safe 60, 70 scorer, um, if not more. So yeah, there, there's a top three. And then we get down to some, you know, a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. So Jazz Tavanga, um, I had him last year in the back row, and he was outstanding. I'm <laughs> again, I'm very tempted to get him in the back row again. I'm not going to go Jazz Tavanga at dummy half because again, I think there's probably better options, and also just the injury concerns. I don't know. Um, oh, he's actually. <laughs> He's actually out injured still with the the ankle, expected to be returned round four or five. Obviously, he had that ankle injury pretty much the whole second half of the season last year. He still pushed out big minutes. He still scored huge, huge points for me. Um, he was outstanding, but he obviously carried an injury. It's, uh, yeah, obviously he's going to be out for the start, so maybe just put a line through Jazz <laughs> Devunga. Um, when he gets back, you know, but... 530k, Jazz Tavanga, if he's going to be playing lock and making 50, 60 tackles a game, getting a couple offloads, averaging 60, 70, he, he's honestly almost a lock-in for the back row as well as McInnes. Um, but again, we'll, we'll see how he pulls up with his injury and also if he if he continues the, the big minutes like he was getting last year. It'll be interesting to see, but he's definitely a, uh, a watch list type player because he's... 530k for, for what he was averaging at the end of last year. Outstanding. Uh, Connor Watson. Again, very, like, we can lock in Connor Watson, Josh Hodgson. Not really similar players, but obviously both have good upside. They're both not... I mean, Hodgson does make plenty of tackles, but he, he's not like a McInnes or a, or a Smith, probably, in the amount. They're, they're more... I mean, Watson's more of a ball runner and Hodgson's more of a, a ball player, but uh, they both got good upside in attack. I, I won't be going near either of these guys, dummy half-wise. Uh, I mean, Hodgson, a couple of years ago, he was up near the top echelon. He has dipped um, quite a bit, though. I don't really know know why. Um, just the, I guess just the attacking stats were, were down last year, so... I mean, Hodgson's a guy that could that, that could turn the season around this year and, and bang out 70 points so per game. He, he's a, 
you know, he, he's a guy that you could you could take a little gamble on. Like if let's say you were gonna go Cook or Hodgson, you're you're almost you're saving two hundred thousand dollars and Hodgson's got the potential to to average almost the same as Cook. It's a gamble for sure, and I wouldn't be doing it, but uh, it's, he's definitely got the potential. Uh, Manasi Finu, obviously, he's not going to be playing, I would expect. Um, obviously, it's got here indefinite. We don't really know the, what's going on yet, but I would imagine Finu is out for the foreseeable future, so he's gone. Although, it, it, it would have been even tougher because Finu at 500k, starting a dummy half, no Coruscant, he would have, he would have been an all, like, I, I would have had to go for, I think I would have had to have gone Finu for my starting dummy half spot, um, but I guess it makes the decision, actually, I don't know if it makes it easier because <laughs> now I've got to decide who I'm going to go because I, before all this happened, Finu was, he was going to be my dummy half. He was going to be my main dummy half. Again, a bit of a gamble because he hasn't started a dummy half really for a full season before. Is he going to be able to get through the workload and all that sort of stuff? But just the upside and you know all the all the good stuff he can do. He was 500k. He he was looking good, but obviously not going to happen. And then we get into sort of these these are just the middling ground that you just you're just not going to go with. Um, Reed Marnie was was good a couple of years ago. Oh, well, last was that last year? Marnie was good for a bit of a cheapy, good price rise. Victor Radley. Um, just too, not inconsistent, but he's too much of a utility player, Victor Radley. He gets switched around when injuries happen. Um, you know, very team, team player, basically. So he, it's tough for him to lock down a position. Um, if, if he does, I actually don't know. I, I would assume he's going to get the starting lock role though, because obviously friend is back. Um, so, Victor Adley starting at lock, I don't know, if he plays 80 minutes at lock, <laughs> he could be uh, he could be a bit of a, uh, a sneaky pickup in a couple of weeks before his price rise, but, so he, he's one to look for, but again, it's, it's always a bit up in the air, because he, he does sort of just play a bunch of different positions, he, he gets used as impact, he gets used as a worker, it, get, it gets mixed around a lot, so yeah, little, I wouldn't be going there to start, but definitely someone to, to keep an eye out for. Um, then these guys, I wouldn't be going anyone here. Andrew McCulloch, not not too bad. Um, then we get down, Jake Friend. I, I'm not going to go Jake Friend, but he <laughs> he is a way better player than a 414,000. Um, obviously, last year... He started the year outstanding. He was he was banging out mass points. I think I think for the start of the year he was winning like the overall for dummy halves. I'm pretty sure he was. And then obviously injuries after injuries curtailed his season. But Jake Friend, I mean, if there weren't so many damn good options at dummy half, Jake Friend is a is a very good pickup for 400k because if he doesn't get injured. If he doesn't suffer a long-term injury, he's going to make money because, I mean, he's a guy that makes 50 tackles a game. He's not he's not your explosive player like a cook, but he's going to get 60 points a game. That That's probably bare minimum he's going to get 60 a game. So he's going to go up in price for sure. Um, and then the rest of these guys wouldn't go anywhere near. Then we get down to the very interesting... Happy Coruscant, who is at 338,000, and at the moment, I have got him as my starting dummy half. Now, this this is a, it's a gamble for sure. I mean, it's, it, it's not a, it's not a massive gamble in terms of, is he going to score well at all? If, if Coruscant gets the starting dummy half spot, which you obviously will, but if he's, if he's fit and he's, he's playing, he's obviously going to score pretty well. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that can, that can match it with the, with the best of them. Um, he just had a bit of a last year injuries and also the, the emergence of Finu really cut down on Coruscant's minutes and impact, but Coruscant is an absolute gun. <laughs> like, I, I just, it's so tough because 
the value here is what's really getting me. 300,000. I'm saving almost 400k over going like a Smith or a Cook. Now, you know, Cook and Smith, and this, this is the thing, right? Cook and Smith, let's say they average 10 more than Coruscant for the season. Is that is that underselling it, overselling it? Who knows? Like, the season hasn't started. But let's say they do 10, 10 more. Now, that, that's, that can add up for sure. But you're saving almost 400k that you can you can obviously spend elsewhere to, to further bolster your team. Also, Coruscant is not going to be playing Origin. Um, and, I mean, best case scenario, Coruscant could average as as much as those guys. He's got the he's got the work rate and he's got the attacking upside. Um I I've I've got to see, you know, how they go in trials and also the team list. If there's no like backup dummy half, I I honestly don't know how I can look past Corusia. Um so yeah, I, that it's a tough one. Um and then we get down to the more cheapies here, and the the big ones here. So, Blake Braley is... And this is where it gets tricky, because Blake Braley is basically a must-have, right? He's he's taken over Jaden Braley. He's at almost bottom dollar... Uh, almost at bottom dollar. I mean, basically, complete cheapy. And he's going to be playing starting dummy half. Is he going to play the full 80? I'm not too sure. Is he going to get, like... 60 points a game, probably not, but if he gets like 40, 50 a game, he's going to make a lot of, a lot of cash, so he's basically a must-have in the dummy half roll, and then if we go down further, uh, where is he? Where is, um, oh, there he is, Harry Grant, is that who I'm thinking of? No, there was someone else. Is he not here? Where is he? Am I losing my mind? <laughs> there was Oh no no, it is um it is Harry Grant. He's he's signed with the Tigers, I'm sure. Has he? <laughs> Am I losing my mind? I think this might not have updated because I'm I'm sure Harry Grant has signed with the Tigers and is expected to to start. I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to look it up. I can't. I think it says that. <laughs> but Harry Grant is another cheapie that sort of emerged. If it, I'm pretty sure he's the he's the guy I'm thinking of. But he's he's a very good player. Um, I'm pretty sure the Tigers picked him up because they need a dummy half, and you know, if he's going to play big minutes as well, like, you've got two almost must-have cheapies there with Blake Braley and Harry Grant. It's a matter of which one you go. I guess you could go both, but that would be a pretty silly move, in my opinion. Um, I don't think either of these guys... Probably Blake Braley is the... He, he's sort of the, the lock-in. He's the very simple bet, but pretty much everyone's going to go him. Like, more than... More than 50-60% of teams are going to have Blake Braley. So, you know, if you if you can go Harry Grant and, and Grant kills it, you, you might have a little bit of an edge over other teams, potentially. Um, but yeah, that that's sort of... That's where it gets tricky, because I'm like... that. It's it's tricky, because I guess my, my sort of thought process now is, do I go who I'm thinking, Blake Braley and Api Corusau, or do I go Api Corusau as sort of my backup and having one of your absolute guns, like a Smith or a Cook, as the starting? Because I could definitely swing it to afford that, but then you're missing out on an absolute cheapie in Blake Braley, you know? So it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up because then it's like, well, if if Corusau, if Corusau and Smith or Cook average a lot more than Braley especially Coruscant, then he's going to make money as well as Braley, and you're not going to play Braley anyway, right? So you're going to get the bonus of more points through a Cook and a Smith 
a, a Cook or a Smith and a Coruscant over having Coruscant and a non-playing Blake Braley. So it's it's gonna be a tough one, dude. Um, you know that this is this is the the discussion. I'm I'm keen to see. Post in the comments, you know, what what are you guys thinking in terms of, of dummy halves? They're sort of the options at the moment. I'm thinking McKinnis, I don't think, he's not a lock-in because he is expensive. I'll have to look at the, the, the back rowers, but McKinnis is, he's a, he's on the brink of a lock-in for me in the back row because he's going to he's gonna score very well. And then it's out of Cook or Smith and Coruscant. Or Coruscant and Bla- uh, Braley. Um, or I guess the third alternative is Cook or Smith and Braley. Um, and not getting Coruscant. But I just I can't... I, I honestly can't not go Coruscant. The value is too high. <laughs> honestly, I need my decision to be made easier. If... If the Panthers just like put a backup dummy half on the bench, it'll make my decision so easy. I just won't go there. But if if Corsi has the the only dummy half in the team, it's gonna be tough to not go him. So yeah, that that's my uh, dummy half discussions. Um, like I said, let me let me know what what you guys are thinking for dummy halves. Um, any any rough rough horses, any any dark horses, I should say, catch your eye. Um, you know, maybe a, uh, you know, Jake, <laughs> I guess it's the other one, Jake Friend as well. Like, I I think Jake Friend and Api Corusau are in, this, are in a very similar boat. Jake Friend is obviously a little bit more expensive and probably a little bit more of a, a safer point getter um, because he just makes, he just does so much work. Corusau, he does a lot of work, but he, he he's more so attack orientated i guess so yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of things to consider um and this is why i'm excited for this year at supercoach i feel like the positions are so much more open there's so many more good options and less because there's less dual positions you can't get all the best players like you've got to make a you got to make a trade-off so yeah, that that'll that'll wrap it up for this video. Hopefully, you guys are going to enjoy this little uh, little series before Supercoach starts. I'm going to be going through every position and giving you guys my my thoughts. So yeah, hopefully, you guys are going to enjoy. Make sure to like and comment, and I'll see you in the next one.